Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, yeah, I know it. For those of you that got need things to be aligned perfectly, this tripod fits over here. And even though if this would be more lining up with anyway, um, <laughs> what I wanted to get into is I'm a multi knife kind of person. Not a multi-tool. Well, I like multi-tools also, but a multi-knife kind of person. So when when I go out on my keychain, here's one that technically counts as a knife. You know, it's a SAC SD. This one is the Frankie and Bird special one. Limited edition. All right, so I at least have that. Now, because I've got cargo pockets and because I like knives, this is the reason why I was getting this. Usually, I have a, at the minimum, this is at the minimum as far as knife goes. This is the smallest, this is the least amount of knife you would catch me with anywhere, you know. Like I said, I don't usually have this on me because... This is on the keychain, and I don't carry my keys around with me inside the apartment. There's not much need. All right, we'll start with the very bottom, because most of the time I'm wearing these type of cargo pants. Uh, they have a very bottom section down here where you could carry a, a fairly smaller knife. Now, for those of you that think that all I'm into is traditional knives, it's just because as far as the flippers go and everything... I've got enough of them, and I've pretty much got one to cover every flavor that you want, you know, as far as whatever you need, so I don't chase them anymore. But this is a pretty cool one. This is a Civivi Chronic. It's kind of like a flipper version of a doctor's knife, but it's got that nice little hollow grind, long, thin blade and everything. Makes a pretty good, like, what would be considered like a boot knife, you know, in the area that you have a boot knife. So I got that on me. Now remember, this is inside the apartment where I've got all my uh, knives on me and everything. So at the top right cargo pocket, I always like to have at least one traditional knife with me or something. This one just happens to be the GEC number 12. This really got me into liking medium toothpicks. And this is like the ultimate, you know, if you want a, a fancy one. So I'm going to have a traditional with me. All right. Then usually lots of flashlights, but this is just one of them. This is the Olight i5R EOS. All right. We keep working our way up. Of course, what what's on my belt? What's making all that squeaky noise and everything? Course, it's the case buoy, man. I'm, I'm packing this inside the apartment. Yeah, it's just oil on there. You have to live with that, I know. Um, I I had switched over to the Civivi Elementum fixed blade, just to see the difference. And yeah, man, it's a breeze carrying that on your, on your hip compared to this buoy. But I kind of missed the, the heft and the weight of the buoy. It's kind of weird, because I don't have to work. You know, I'm not lugging this thing around but i do go walking around with it and everything all right up on my belt i've added this recently which was kind of cool this carabiner with uh another olite if this hangs from your belt loop and you turn this on when you're walking it illuminates where you're walking you can be hands-free i mean but it's right there at your feet you know so that's kind of cool See, so there's another flashlight. All right, in my special belt carry area. I'm going to usually have something up there. Um, the ones that tend to ride a lot are the uh, Cold Steel Fin Wolf, the Bear and Some little uh, Spider Co. flip out type of one, and uh, the Roper Pecos. All those ride well because. It's not a super deep carry. If you get a deep carry one and you're riding off a belt loop that's going this way, they're going to flop. Now, if you've got a wide enough belt, this will help hold it 
in place but this is a very good it's like a scout carry but you don't even need a sheath and this never falls out this is the k bar dozier and d2 all right some might say i'm i have too many knives but we're not finished yet <laughs> in my back pocket i've got this guy the uh kalashnikov all right i could be wearing a neck knife but i'm not but you know that would have been a, another one uh streamlight i found this guy i lost him for a while and this brown was kind of hard to find but i found him and uh i've just been testing this out i was using the Olight i3t and i hadn't been recharging or anything i had nickel cadmium batteries in there which operate on a lower voltage 1.2 as opposed to like 1.5 for an alkaline and uh i've been using it you know just turn it on because its first button push is a low and a lot of times what i needed was just a little bit of light instead of blinding me so i was using that in that mode and it just stopped i mean there was no warning it used to be old incandescent bulbs and everything when they started going down you could see it was slowly gradually dim with these newer electronics on uh, on some of these now admittedly it wasn't its other uh, but i think you know the battery that it came with but i think that uh it says it'll do that in the manual it says hey you know it's not going to give you a warning it's just going to go <laughs> boom no light i didn't wait and see you know like sometimes like lighters you run out of fuel and lighter and you think that's it no more lights out of this and you can wait a little bit sometimes or shake it or do some hoodoo voodoo magic you know you get it all right there's another flashlight i think we're no way we got the left pocket over here left cargo pocket another boker family a little boker sub i like a push button and a uh, auto in the left pocket because like i said if you're pulling it out left-handed you can still operate it left-handed kind of ambidextrous if you have to so yeah Am I, am I carrying too many knives? The thing is, I've got to, uh, a lot of times I, I'm, I'm testing a knife. You know, I'm like, this guy's sometimes optional. I don't always have that one in my, down there by my ankle. This one switches positions. It's usually on me somewhere. It could be on a, I got a Kydex sheath for it, you know. So it could be on the neck, could be in the pocket, could be in the back pocket. A traditional knife, like I said, just today it was just this one um belt knife flashlights galore you know there's a flashlight on this one um and then small knives the reason and big knives and the, the reason for it is i don't want one knife to try to do everything i could probably get by with just this throughout the day or any any one of these small knives could probably do it you know to get by without the day but if you're in another room or you're you know you know i got a small apartment if you're in another room or you're somewhere else you know and you don't want to go back there like man i gotta go all the way i gotta walk all you know five ten feet you know to get a knife um you've got it on you you know if you're going somewhere you've got all this crap on you probably could eliminate a lot of this you know just go with like one or two flashlights um but why you know this way if this battery runs down let's say you fell on a manhole and you're in a cave somewhere you know and you're trapped you've got all these lights you know until you run out of light and then you can go to you know got a peanut lighter here we could we could make a fire if we had to so we got illumination and fire covered we've got uh cutting edges covered you've got fidget factor you know if you just wanted to sit there and annoy somebody if if you got sheeple around and you don't want anybody to get scared you can you know elegantly castrate your 
goat or whatever, you know, without people being afraid. They usually don't get afraid on farms. You know, that's not, that's not a thing. But, so there you go. Are you a multi-knife type of person? Or does one, you know, cover everything for you? Even on a multi-tool, they usually have a couple of blades, one or two. Sometimes it's, they're trying to get it jack of all trades so they'll have serrated and regular. I think the, the issue, one time I was watching a Jersey Knife guy on one of his, and he was talking about serrated blades and why does people not like them. Um, I used to have, I still do, the, an M-Tech that was serrated right here and standard up here. And what I liked about it even before that, I had the, the Gerber Easy out. It was partially serrated. And what I liked about it is if you're cutting through plastic straps and pallet straps, the serrate will, will cut enough. Sometimes it go all the way through it. It can act like a little saw. But if it doesn't and you got the rest of it sharp, it'll usually cut through a band with one. Even with a sharp blade, a lot of times, you're going to have to do some sawing you know, to get through one of those bands. So at work, that came in handy. I think the thing is that people don't like about it is if you ever have to go to sharpen them, it's not as easy for them. You know, they don't know how to use a crock stick or they don't understand how to sharpen serrations. Admittedly, it's not as easy as, you know, just going back and forth and sharpening something, but it can be done like anything else. So there you go run off long enough on that but that's my that's my EDC loadout for just around in the apartment you know if I was going to go somewhere else I'd add a pew pew to it or something but uh that's enough for covering my range of knife needs in my apartment which keep in mind within arm's reach on either side of me are knives everywhere plus in the chimney there's buoy knives and there's knives everywhere in here, really. You would think that the knives are trying to take over, but they're not. I'm basically trying to control them. So, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.